Hey, so pause real quick. I think I found that spider. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you're gonna hear a thump here in a minute. He has a big ass hobo spider in his mm. house. He's got a huge ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you move? Watch out, Toby. Dogs are useless in this. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Quicker than I thought. <laughs> All right, I think that that one got him. <laughs> expecting a spider He's... to take the microphone <laughs> <laughs> he is gone <laughs> hello and welcome to go with the heat i'm dominic and i'm john i'm melissa and this is your cultural guide to punch chop and kick your way through the greatest era of action movies now listen people i don't throw this around very often very rarely do i say greatest movie ever because not many movies can fall into that category however the movie the greatness that exists on film for the movie that we are talking about this week is hands down my favorite karate movie in all of karate movies i say it a lot because we've watched a lot of karate (laughs) movies and we continue to watch them just like on our own on like a Tuesday night. Like, wonder what this Indonesian action film is about. Yeah, we watch, we do that all the time. <laughs> but I do not throw this around very often. And we specifically chose this movie and then built a theme around it. Pretty much. And then put other movies in around it because we spe- we wanted to talk about this movie so much. And it's all come down to this because I'm so excited to be able to talk about our movie this week, which is Miami Connection, which originally premiered on August 26, 1988, but then re-premiered December 11th, 2012. More on that in a minute. It is directed by Richard Park and Y.K. Kim. It's going to sound familiar because it's written by Richard Park and Y.K. Kim, and it is produced by Y.K. Kim. Huh. I wonder who this guy is. I wonder if he's involved any further in this movie <laughs> and the quality of his guitar he playing. <laughs> he, he might also play Mark, this YK Kim. No surprise. This movie is YK Kim's vision and brainchild. He's beginning to end. He is involved production, direction, writing. Like he's involved in all of it. But I want to come back to that other name, Richard Park. Let's go back in time. Back to 1987. YK Kim is on a Korean talk show. Richard Park, who is a Korean film director, sees the interview with YK Kim, contacts him, and says, you should make a movie. And YK Kim says, that is a fantastic idea. And Richard Park says, I'll be there to help you through it. And then Miami Connection is born. It took so much of YK Kim that he had to leverage basically everything that he owned to spend, get ready to set your faces to stunned, one million dollars to make this movie. No, he did not. Where did the money go? (laughs) Who did? Who took money from him? (laughs) Someone took advantage of him. A million dollars was it all in the like music budget or something? (laughs) No, it's got to be like fines from the city for filming without permits. <laughs> Was the or... city taking advantage of him? <laughs> because I'm sorry, I love this movie too, but it's not. <laughs> half, half the scenes are either filmed at his right? house or at the college that they went to. I know, and I love YK Kim, and I'm with you as I feel like someone took advantage of him somewhere. Something happened to spend that million dollars, but he leveraged everything that he has because so, it was in his heart. He Aww. knew this movie had to be made. The story had to be told. I mean, it's about friendship and loyalty. It has to be told. Hey, but but seriously, I've read interviews. The actors said they didn't get paid like anything. Like, where did the million dollars go? Like, seriously. So, so wait a minute. So this really isn't about friendship and loyalty. He didn't even pay these people. Wait a second. <laughs> Melissa's on to something about what this movie's actually about, and I'll let her come back to that later. But it, maybe in her final thoughts, what this movie actually is, yeah, which is something I, know I what hadn't thought of. This movie actually before. is. <laughs> it premieres, it runs for three weeks only in theaters in Central Florida. 21 years pass. One day, an employee at the Alamo Draft House in Austin, browsing eBay, finds a movie on eBay called Miami Connection, buys the VHS of it. He had never heard of the movie before, watches it, loves it, takes it to the Alamo Draft House. They do a midnight screening. People loved it. He takes it to his boss, who then goes to Alamo 
like or the sorry draft house films they start to contact yk kim they love it so much they want to distribute the movie yk kim says it's scam and he hangs up on them <laughs> repeatedly they try for months to try and get a hold of him he's like no one loves that movie <laughs> Damn. oh man because you gotta imagine like it's it's it played for three weeks in central florida didn't do anything. He's like, man, I'm at a million dollars. You know, he's been kicking himself for 20 years. And then someone calls. <laughs> that, of course you think it's a prank. They already scammed about a million dollars somehow. <laughs> he finally concedes and allows them to do it. They start doing midnight screenings at the draft house in Austin. People, it's like sold out every single night. Blows up. They distribute it online they make dvds prints of it they they sell merch like it blew up and this that's what this movie is today because the alamo draft house literally saved this movie otherwise it would have disappeared into the ether forever which is why when we can go back to movie theaters my dollars are only reserved for the alamo draft house well you can watch movies see them right now you don't have to go to the theater they are doing like virtual screenings at your house so just saying, if you want to support the Alamo <laughs> Draft House. <laughs> but wouldn't that just be streaming? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But they're but they're it's Alamo Draft House movies that you can only see there. So it's, they're doing like movie festivals and like oh, okay. obscure... the types of movies that they pick out. Yeah, too, where you yeah. might find a, a little gem, mm -hmm. like Miami Connection. Yeah, exactly. It's like certain movie festivals. Like for example, they had one where it was like all women directors and stuff like that. I mean, maybe if I can zoom with Marie Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so it is no surprise that when it came down to choosing best city for best karate city miami connection was immediately in the running not because of miami the whole movie takes place in orlando yeah <laughs> so i mean well, let's not talk about that it's not <laughs> actually in miami the whole time <laughs> but there's everything that goes along with this movie there's yk kim john will talk later about what he became what he does now there's the draft house saving this movie. There's what it took to make it. And then there's the movie itself. And there's Jim. <laughs> <laughs> he finds his dad. <laughs> Who's younger than him. <laughs> but yes. That's where that million dollars went. That <laughs> hair dye. We are just going to dive right into our breakdown on this one. We don't need to talk about why we picked it or anything. You're going to find out why this is the greatest karate movie if you've never seen it you can find out right now why this is the greatest karate movie ever so we open up with a traditional cocaine deal in miami i mean the, it's right the, in the middle. yeah it's an everyday occurrence it doesn't even really look like drug dealers too it's like an army of accountants i know <laughs> it's like hey you want to wear the funny hat today yeah okay wait we all have the same hat we got it at the bargain the, the, the what did I call it? The hat barn. Like we got it at the hat barn. They're all wearing the same jaunty hat that looks kind of like a cowboy hat, but a little different. Yeah. Yeah, and, the, and then and, and then and cheap all, like, polyester to, suits. <laughs> yeah, and they're all just like trying to be sneaky. At the very end, all of a sudden, ninjas come rolling in. <laughs> ninjas on motorcycles, no less. I know. During the open, they showed these random scenes of. The motorcycle gang, and I, and I kept seeing it like, what the hell do motorcycles have to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple points here from the open. One is a definite theme throughout this entire season where we talked about karate has been that there are certain tropes that make it into every single one of these movies. We've talked about a bunch of them. We're going to talk about more of them. But one for sure that stands out is the jaunty hats. <laughs> yes. The jaunty hats are always in these movies. Even though they don't make any sense because they're like, it's like a cowboy hat slash fedora. I fedora. I don't know. I don't even know. But it was like literally two guys were wearing the same hat. It was the same freaking hat. Like, you guys, your prop department doesn't have a wide variety, do they? That's where that million dollars went. No, two, the fight choreography is great. As in, they were very, very careful to make sure no one got hurt. <laughs> no one got punched. Don't worry. Everyone oh, moved yeah. very slowly. <laughs> Be prepared. I'm going to go like this. So you make sure you move, okay? <laughs> but the one thing I do appreciate is the effort they put into the special effects, like the sword to the face. <laughs> yes, um, yes. You know, even though it's totally corny. It, it's still like effort they put in just to make it look like he actually gets like sliced up. Uh, Solid effort. Great. Solid effort. 
<laughs> they did not look like they squirted ketchup on his face. <laughs> it looked like real blood, not ketchup, I repeat. <laughs> Perhaps barbecue also, sauce, maybe, but the, not ketchup. The extended. Uh, oh! uh, and then it paused. Yeah. And then it paused. <laughs> <laughs> The ninjas make off with a whole bunch of cocaine, no money. Because they're dummies. And they leave a bunch of cocaine on the table, too, when they leave. Like, just left, like, 40 grand they can't see worth anything. of cocaine on the table, the they, picnic table. They can't see crap out of those ninja things. <laughs> How do they drive motorcycles if they can't see out of their ninja hoods? I mean, well, I'm, I'm serious. Be honest, <laughs> I, I think this is kind of a flawed business model, too. Because in the very next scene, we see them, like, all at their karate dojo. And so, clearly, it's... A karate school that trains ninjas to steal drugs. <laughs> it's a very specific training course. <laughs> it is. It is. And it, it, it's a very lucrative business model, too. Because I, I can't imagine. It, it's got to be hard to get like a degree for that. <laughs> the sensei is mad because they forgot to grab the money. But he went back and got it. So he's well, already. His people him. are untrustworthy already. They're. I mean, we got to come up with a better way for recruiting. I mean, these people just aren't cutting they're it. They're like 16-year-old kids, right? They go to karate <laughs> school. <laughs> I will argue that point because in, we're going to go to the opening credits here. And there's a song playing and it's showing like clips of stuff. And the gang, the motorcycle gang, the leader, the sensei's got a wicked scarf. Yeah. He's riding oh my that God. motorcycle. When he rides his motorcycle and his jaunty scarf waves <laughs> behind him. Yes. That's so but, tough. But his motorcycle gang is a lot of fat white dudes. Yeah, what's the deal with so that? So I think that's the problem is in this recruiting of ninja drug stealers. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bunch of fat bikers. <laughs> what, you, gills, what you're saying gills, is, whatever they're called. it's a bunch of rednecks that live in Florida. Yes. And that ride no, motorcycles it, we, and also do karate. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that that's the most Florida thing ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Here's where trope number two comes in. That's been a theme in some of the movies, but what Miami Connection does is it puts them all into the same movie. So the, all the tropes, this one was in this one, this one was that one, but in Miami Connection it has all of them. So we have the jaunty hats. Now there's the music. And the thing that was with some of these movies is that the music is oddly specific <laughs> to what's happening in the scene. Because this music, I'm going to read you some of the lyrics here to this song. This is in the opening sequence when they're riding their motorcycles. Yep. Bikers by day, ninjas by night, swift and fit, not afraid to fight. Steal all your cocaine <laughs> along with your life. Strike with no mercy into the night. Escape from Miami. Escape with your life. <laughs> oh, they wish they could afford Miami. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked a bunch about the music in these movies that they are. It's the just really seriously is just like the whole movie written into the song. <laughs> <laughs> so Yoshido is coming up from Miami to Orlando to meet up with his drug connection, be able to move that cocaine. That way he can make some money off of it. And out comes Jeff, this connection. And he's, man, he looks oddly familiar. It's just something about him with a black <laughs> wig on. <laughs> so in case you guys don't know, we have a connection to this movie. John's in it. I'm oh, sorry. John's twin is in it. If he, if I he have was a goatee a, a now. Back it then. doesn't play. I saved the beard for COVID. It's gone. <laughs> the first time I watched this movie, it was one of those moments where Melissa like stood up. Like, oh my God, the guy looks like John. He did. <laughs> And that nobody there can get it out of their heads. <laughs> I'll admit there is a resemblance. I think I'm taller. I love Jeff because he puts on his fancy sweatpants for this meeting with his drug connection. <laughs> you mean his, like, is he wearing the camo ones? No. Oh, no. Oh, the regular they're, ones. They're dark. Oh, okay. But he's got the cut off green, like the sleeves cut off, yeah, the green yeah, shirt yeah. and that wig. Yeah, the wig. <laughs> The wig is spectacular, by the way. <laughs> Jeff is going to move the cocaine for Yoshido. They're doing a meetup. They've known each other for a long time. There's lots of bad dialogue. None of that matters. Yeah, what, not really. <laughs> what matters in this scene is we see dragon sound for the first time. On stage. On stage. Singing about Taekwondo. <laughs> Again, the music is very specific to what's happening in the movie. Talking about how Taekwondo is going to stop the evil. <laughs> and the actual lyrics are taekwondo 
<laughs> here's another trope moment in all the in karate movies some of them they have these music scenes where they play the entire song or always like they made sure to play that entire thing in miami connection Every song is the entire song. I think it's they didn't really have all the movie they needed, so they were like, we got to stretch this thing out. <laughs> and it's still really short as it is. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because, yeah, it's, it's not even, it's only an hour and 26 minutes, and about a third of this is just music video of them singing about <laughs> friendship and dragons. Not a shirt to be had. <laughs> all shirtless. <laughs> okay, but let's talk about the real part that we want to talk about with dragon sound the music great lyrics great let's talk about the fake music instrument playing okay let's be honest it's really only one guy who's real bad at it <laughs> jim's trying his best to do the keyboards but he's not keeping up that well but but mark he's not a good player <laughs> mark's guitar doesn't have strings on it <laughs> and i think that was like they were giving him they were doing a favor for him they're like listen you get your hands all caught up in the strings and stuff. It looks real bad. Let's just cut the strings off of Marks, okay? But he's trying his hardest. He's doing his darndest. But it's, just he... not, it's not coming out right. I wonder if he kept accidentally strumming it. And they're like, all right, just take the strings out. That way we'll keep making noise. There's also one moment in the scene where he, not, he doesn't have a guitar at all. He's like just clapping over his head with no guitar. And then he goes, ah, oh, and he turns around, he grabs a guitar, and he puts it on. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're saying is he's not a natural musician okay <laughs> yk kim we love you we but, do we but love you we do but yeah <laughs> next day after killing it on stage the fans love them the bar loves them they just absolutely destroyed their set while they were there they're at they also go to college by the way well maybe well, not okay maybe not kim, okay, but. <laughs> okay okay let's get something straight there is no way in hell that Mark goes to college because he looks like he's 45. <laughs> he looks like some, like they brought their weird uncle with them to college or something. Yes. And he's like desperately trying to hang out with them. Like, hey, kids, let's be cool and go get a pizza after this. <laughs> but it doesn't, I'm sorry. It <laughs> now, this movie is so wholesome that Jane is taking her basic computer language course and she's making stuff. And the, instructor is going around telling everyone like oh wow you did a really great job you made a great circle jane <laughs> john her boyfriend not to get you confused with our john john as a member of dragon sound comes in and helps her like sneak out of class this is gonna get a little confusing here because she says i have a brother he pays for everything paying for me to go to college pays for my dorm paying for everything but he's kind of an ass I don't like him, and he hangs out with a very bad crowd, but you should meet him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, she's kind of ungrateful. He's paying for everything for her. She's like, I don't really like him that much. And he asks, like, how come? He's like, I don't know. It's just kind of annoying. He just raised me since my parents died and everything. You know, he took care of me. He's paying for me. I'm an ungrateful little... <laughs> Well, I mean, at first he sounds like a very responsible older brother, but once we actually meet him, he seems a little bit overly jealous. Yes. <laughs> Creepily jealous. He's very invested very in your personal life. <laughs> yeah. The whole gang shows up. That's Jeff is going to pick up Jane from school. With the whole gang, though? Yeah, like, like the whole like gang. four cars that people need to pick up one person? That's not <laughs> economical. <laughs> Jeff's gang is Florida. Like, it is straight Florida that comes rolling through there, <laughs> including Jeff, who gets out in full combat fatigues with the sleeves cut off of it. I'm pretty sure one of those cars was a Pinto. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> and then he immediately gets mad. I don't want you dating this song, bitch. Why does he yell like all the lines? So he's like, I don't well, want you yes. talking to my sister, like yelling. <laughs> And, and I was telling you guys pre-recording that, like every time I watch this, I it, like I'm blown away. The acting is worse than I remember it being. Because yeah, he, he like screams every single line. <laughs> the best part about Jeff is that he routinely forgets his lines. Yes. So there's these long bosses like, "You son of a bitch!" Oh, so but I, I, want you I, to I stay think I have my sister. <laughs> I actually, I think I have a reason for that, though. I did I, I, during some of my snooping for uh, music <laughs> and guest stars. Uh, I read a few interviews with some of the cast members, and one of them mentioned that the original script was in Korean, mm. and that YK would translate it for them right before they filmed, and oh then they would God. repeat what he said. 
That makes so, so much sense. That's probably why he's yelling. <laughs> <laughs> he has a real hard time remembering, like, because there's these long. He's the only one of all of them that have these really long pauses. <laughs> Come on, Jane, get into the van. Because they, keep, because they had to keep pausing the camera and telling him his line again. There were so many moments in the movie where it was, the pause was long enough that I was able to yell out from the couch, Line! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, he's, he's like trying his hardest to like put some feeling into it. So I guess by putting feeling into it, he's just like yelling it at the top of his lungs. <laughs> All I could think of was emote! Emote! <laughs> I'm emoting and as I, much as I can! I can't help but wonder, why does he hate this karate band? Like, like, <laughs> what is it about them that he's discriminating against? Yeah, um, damn, and then that damn karate band again. <laughs> I don't want you hanging around this damn band again. <laughs> it pains me to say this, but I'm going to breeze over a couple of scenes here because there's the great scene where the former band goes to the club and wants their job back. And then the owner of the club, like, judos his... It kicks all but, their asses. But you're not going to talk about that guy? Yes. He's like, we want our damn job back. You took away our job. He's like, he also just yells everything. You damn guys, I'm going to get your ass. <laughs> I'm going to kill your ass. I'm going to kill your ass. <laughs> he says, like, I quote, don't give me a hard time. Next time I'll kill your ass. <laughs> but I told you, it hurts me. It hurts me. There's so much talk about this movie, though. Also, another scene is just hey. some flags. <laughs> I do have to give the the old band leaders some credit. He's right. It's just crappy kitty music that they're singing. (laughs) There's another scene where Kim is treating all of, or Kim Mark is treating all of his friends to some noodles at his uncle's place. But I want to get back to the club because they're back that night again against the ninja is their club banger that they're playing. Okay, but are I, I don't understand. Why do they write these songs like this? Are they trying to fight the ninjas like in real life? Or That's I mean, the I don't question. Get it. Because <laughs> here's some lyrics. Be, as I, just like the gist of the lyrics. Being against the ninja civil war, stop the senseless killing and bring peace. That's what they say. Yeah. We, we will stop the senseless killing and bring peace. But who wrote the lyrics? What are they talking about? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. No, so get this, guys. William P. Young wrote the lyrics for for Escape from Miami and Taekwondo Family. He also played the club owner. (gasps) (laughs) Maybe he does know about karate. Maybe he does know about music. (laughs) Maybe that's why he was willing to fight over it. He wrote the songs. See? See? We're putting it together, guys. By the way, that movie was his only credit. I mean, yeah, that, that makes total sense. He was, was his only songwriting credit. Too. Yeah, he was not. He, yes. he might be okay at writing karate songs, but he was not a good actor or a good fighter for that matter. But again, oddly specific music yep. and play the entire song. It was the entire song, yes. End of the night, they bounce off into their car like, yeah, great set. All right, great job, guys. Everyone, great job. Pizza? I don't know. He's, he, he probably says something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, I think he does say pizza. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> but the former band follows them, corners them on some street in Orlando, and is, they're threatening to fight them. But you can tell they want nothing to actually do with fighting them. He's like, just get out of my town. Get out of town. He's like yelling just and yelling pointing. at the top of his lungs. <laughs> What kind of music do you think the former band did? Was it you think like I'm no thinking idea. bluegrass? I appreciate I'm thinking bluegrass because yeah, exactly. I'm hoping it's like a flock of seagulls cover band. It can't be something band. tough. <laughs> yes, I appreciate that the main guy from from the other like competing band because he's such a poor fighter. He has a, a bandage wrapped around his head this entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. He does like the whole movie. He's got a bandage. Wrap like a mummy on his head the whole time. <laughs> Dragon Sound, then after getting beer poured on them, have to get out and fight. Now, mind you, it's like 30 to 1 odds. The other people have weapons. They don't. But Dragon Sound lays an ass whooping on okay. the entire... Mark lays an ass whooping. <laughs> I mean, I don't think... It, I think Angelo, like, runs. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Mark, really. And John, I mean, that guy, John, he, he can fight, too. But... 
Really, Mark. Mark's really just... <laughs> that night. This is all the same day. I know. What a busy day. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, they're going through their mail. And this is, I mean, this is what makes... These are the types of scenes that make this movie. This is why I love this movie so much of these exact scenes. Jim gets a letter. But John is fucking with him. And it's like, not going to give it to him. They're like, haha, can you get it? Yoink. No, sorry. Over here. Yikes. So you can't get it now. And then Mark has to come in. It's like, what is going on in here? Give him his letter already. No, they're mad at Jim. He's like, because Jim gets mad. He goes, give me my letter back. And he get, rips it out of hand. And then John's like, what's the deal with you? What's wrong with you? Why are you so sensitive? And then Mark <laughs> comes in. And he's like, what is going on in here? Are you like, what are you fighting about? And they all turn on Jim like, Jim, what are you doing? Why are you fighting with your friends? <laughs> and that's when Jim has to break the news to them. He has a father. <laughs> oh, what? what? Oh, you have oh. a father? I thought we all or we were all orphans. <laughs> I thought that's why we could be friends. We were all. I can't believe can't you have a dad you didn't tell us. Exactly. <laughs> You've been keeping secrets from us, Jim. And then Jim, poor Jim, who does who doesn't oh, know he his gets father. So upset. Yeah, he has to cry yeah. and tell his sad story about how his dad was in the military and his and my <laughs> and his mother was from Korea, right? Uh -huh. And how his yeah. dad like left and and he didn't know him and he promised his mom that like he would find him and it's like a, it's a really sad story. But why should he have to tell them all this stuff <laughs> just because he got a letter yeah. in the mail? God, they're nosy. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? The next day they're gonna go off. They're gonna blow off some steam. They're gonna head down to the beach and they're gonna go cruising for babes. Okay, or be weird and sexually harass women. Because <laughs> that's actually what some of them are doing. <laughs> and this is kind of a fun scene. They're messing around. They're playing in the water. They're John and Jane are necking. They're just going at it. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're in water and it still looks wet. <laughs> so <laughs> moist. <laughs> the funny thing about it is that Jane is played by Kathy Collier. And Kathy was cast in the movie because her and her then boyfriend, Angelo Gennati, who plays Tom, he's the Freddie Mercury looking lead singer dude. <laughs> he looks like oats. <laughs> He, he looks like an, oh. it, it, so apparently Angelo's sister took pictures for YK's book, told Angelo about the movie, and Angelo and Kate are musicians. They offered to do music for the soundtrack. When they met with YK, it was like in the living room of uh, of like someone's house, and he immediately cast them both in the movie. <laughs> so sounds about right. <laughs> um, and it's pretty big parts too, because like Kathy, she plays Jane, the love interest, and then Angelo, the Tom, the lead singer. But like in scenes, because they didn't want it, I, I guess because they didn't want it to be uncomfortable, or because they weren't telling him. But I guess in scenes in which Jane and John would make out, they would have Angelo like go get beers or something <laughs> when they filmed those. So. I wonder what scenes got cut. Man, was he surprised when the movie came out, huh? <laughs> Boy, she never so, told well, him, and, and then, I like, guess... the movie comes out, and he's like, I went and got these beers, and you were making out with <laughs> Vincent. <laughs> he's doing good. He's no, I, I don't want to give up all my music stuff. I, I guess <laughs> <laughs> we will come back to that. At Jeff's gym, the former band shows up. They want Jeff to go handle Dragon Sound. Now, just remember... This band, they had a job. Dragon Sound got them fired. Then the band went to go fight with the club owner, got destroyed, went to fight with Dragon Sound, got destroyed. That damn band again. <laughs> like, aren't they embarrassed enough at this point? <laughs> Why don't they cut their losses? No, they just cannot yes. stop themselves. <laughs> now, time for another karate movie trope. They're going to go to UCF. This is where everyone goes to school. But... Apparently, the Dragon Sound are going to put on a karate like showcase out on the lawn on campus. And it's karate not a showcase. They're just messing around outside of Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> but a karate movie wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the sensei beating the fuck out of his own students. Yes, that's exactly what's going on. And I, I really appreciate that first he puts on, Mark puts on his own show of all the stuff he can do. And his friends sit there like kindergartners cross-legged and wait for their chance to get their ass kicked uh -huh. <laughs> like seriously they're like, they're like it's my turn now and they jump up and then he's and by the end of it he's got their nose and his toe 
and he's squeezing <laughs> it like honk honk. <laughs> I mean, there was a sweet scene where they where John was supposed to have a knife and he was like going after him and <laughs> it was very slow. Yeah. Like, okay, now hold on, we're gonna be careful. Okay, like you know, make, make sure you move. Okay, you good? All right, all right here we go. Aha, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> There's also some like wannabe Jan Hammer. I mean, sorry. Someone oh. on Facebook told us that we're pronouncing his name wrong. His name's like Jean Hamour or some shit. <laughs> Jean. Jean Hamour. Jean Hamour. Jean Hamour. <laughs> some way Jan Hamour is very sad. <laughs> <laughs> I, sent <him> that, <laughs> I sent them that message. A little side scene happens here where Mark and Jack and John all talk. And Jack is really concerned about the other former band and Jeff. Like, what's up with their most names? It's <laughs> also, sorry, I'm still laughing at him. He's like, it's but in that damn cocaine, that stupid <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> I also like that he goes, you know, John, we can write songs about other things than Taekwondo. <laughs> and I was like, like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He also says, hey, we're an international band. We can tour international and we can go to all the countries where our heritage is from. Like John in Italy and me, Jack, Israel. Uh Uh-huh. And then he talks about Mark. And he says Mark and Korea. Everyone, but they none of them talk about so- Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then they talk about how they could go around and, like, practice peace, you know. Pe- all the peace. They have such peace in their hearts, but later on they will be murdering people. No, they, yeah, people need to die. <laughs> people will be dying, <laughs> and they will be killing them, just so you know. <laughs> Band takes off for Uncle Songs, who's expecting them, but a bunch of ruffians in some, I mean, tiny shorts. Oh, my God. Those were not shorts. Those were just briefs. Those were underwear. <laughs> that man... Showing brain. Oh my god! All yeah. over that restaurant. Yeah. Make sure you clean that chair. <laughs> <laughs> it was just dangling on the seat the entire time. <laughs> no one walks out on the bill. Not while Uncle's on the watch. He goes yeah, out and no, beats uh-uh. some ass. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Jane goes to see Jeff. Wants him to leave Dragon Sound alone. Jeff says, "Stay out of my business." Basically. <laughs> I, I wrote that. Meanwhile, over at the bad guy training ground, <laughs> we've reached this moment in the film in which they are going to coordinate and fight in random locations. <laughs> Again, very Florida. <laughs> yes. I mean, come on. Where else would you think that was going to happen? Arizona. <laughs> it, it, it's the Florida of the West. Exactly. <laughs> It's literally like, like like after school by the by the bike rack. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> At the same time, Dragon Sound is a plot to finally settle the score with that former band mm-hmm. and with Jeff down at the railroad tracks and Dragon Sound's going to show up there and take care of business. They have this whole plan, which I don't know what the plan was when they finally do get there. Because it's just like, well, we're just going to fight them. No, they said they ha- it was like time for them to stand up for themselves. And like that was just the plan. Like their plan was just to go fight them for once and for all. But yeah. that was supposed to be the end of yeah. it. Except it wasn't. Because that just pissed <laughs> them off. And so then they got Freddie Mercury and beat him up and tied him up to a water tower. <laughs> he thought they he- do get one. They take one captive. After basically destroying everyone else, and the cops show up, and they're like, cops! And everyone gets in their cars, I and they like drive I like how away. they make sure the other like, yes. the competing people get in their cars, too. Like, Jeff's like, hey, everyone, the cops here. Get in your cars. Drive away. We'll do this later. I don't want anyone to get arrested. <laughs> that, that's what I mean. Schoolyard fight. Now it's a tough guy motorcycle gang montage in which Jeff is coming down to Miami, and he's going to meet with Yoshido. Yeah. Do we have to talk about this? This is very Florida. The people that are in this motorcycle gang, what is happening there? The titties, they They are are very Florida. (laughs) (laughs) It's not completely Florida. Tom's wearing a hat that says something like Colorado Outward Bound School. Yes, it does. (laughs) You mean Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Jeff, is wearing a hat that says Colorado something. It's like, so they had no hats on set, and they were like, hey, you got to wear a hat in the scene, because, you know, you're in a biker bar. They wear hats. <laughs> well, you see, yes. we, have this, we have this little bird in our house who also loves this movie. He's roughly 14 years old. Yes. And he loves this movie, too, and he watched the riff tracks of it as well. Yep. Like, he's just as into it as we are. And he said that he read somewhere that Jeff is wearing a wig. 
That that's not he's his, really bald. Because he's bald. I imagine that day when they're doing the motorcycle shoot, which is off site somewhere. Yeah. They had to go to this other bar. Yeah. They go do right. They show up him. They're like, okay, Jason, yeah, ready to go? Yeah, don't have motorcycles. <laughs> they had to go to the motorcycles to film it. Or maybe he rode a motorcycle, so he had to have a hat on because he doesn't have a. He doesn't or have how I choose to think of it is that he showed up like, okay, everyone ready to go. And Jeff's like, hey guys, I forgot my wig. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're like, okay. Who's got a hat? Can you wear a hat? And someone's like, I got this this one that was in my car. It's a Colorado Outbound Society. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like some kind of like charter school. I don't know. <laughs> At the orphanage house, Mark does a house check in and everyone's stressed out doing homework or writing music or whatever's going on. <laughs> the next morning, they talk more about Jim's loser ass dad. Mondo doesn't rhyme with anything. <laughs> Now, this isn't a hallmark of a karate movie. It's a hallmark of a B movie. Why do you love trash movies? Because, like, okay, yeah, like, Deli Bet would fall under the category of trash movie, but not like any of the JCVD movies. They're just, like, kind of corny action movies. There's a difference between that and a trash movie, okay, which is, like, what Miami Connection is. Don't you be saying JCVD and Deadly Bet in the same sentence? <laughs> 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 That's, like, trash on his shoe. Like, <laughs> scrape it off and go along. <laughs> but Deadly Bet falls into that trash, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And then JCVD stuff and, like, some of the other movies we've watched, they're, they're just corny action yeah, movies. Yeah, they're corny, but yeah, they've still made it they're to fun. theaters. <laughs> yeah. But what, mm-hmm. one of the differences is in the B movies and why we love them so much is the inconsistencies. And we talked about like the side plots that go nowhere, those types of things. But rarely do we talk about the filming, the actual camera work that it takes to do it. And one of the hallmarks of a B movie, and you see it in this scene, is that at night, it's really dark. Yeah. And it's really hard to tell it's hard to see anyone. <laughs> and the next day, it is really bright in there yeah. in fact so bright the white <laughs> is washing out and it's like the color balance is way off and i know yeah. i'm talking a lot of camera stuff that only certain people will understand but in b movie that's like when you know you've got something good but they do a hard cut and you're like whoa <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here <laughs> so then they go to school when they're leaving school there's like a huge contingent of students just waiting to shake their hands as they're walking down the sidewalk I think that was totally normal that was not because they were filming there <laughs> <laughs> in that same interview with Kathy Collier, she mentions that most of the other actors in the movie were students at YK's karate school. So, uh, perspective. Mm, so that's going to put another flag up for Melissa's theory about this movie. So we will come back to that. Mark says, I'm going to take y'all out for pizza. They go to the pizza place. I'm, you're forgetting when they yell pizza when they get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> they're very enthused it's like dad taking everybody mark his dad because he's very old and he's taking everyone to pizza because <laughs> he's trying to be cool with his kids that he hasn't talked to in a long time no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so then tom who's parking the car gets kidnapped by jeff's gang and this is when they talk about what john was saying take him up to the water tower tie him up fast forward to that night like nothing nothing happened in between like where'd tom go we Uh-oh. just suddenly appear at that scene where tom's <laughs> tied up to the water tower they never like showed what happened when they figured out he was gone or anything they ate that whole granted. pizza and never even thought about him <laughs> granted i don't think john cares much because you know i mean he's got jane yeah exactly so. hmm. and this is when there's a noticeable shift in dragon sound it stops being about friendship and honesty and it Peace. turns into murder murder because <laughs> they definitely murder some people in this battle including, including jeff oh, john's yeah. gone <laughs> <laughs> john's twin is no more he has a gruesome yeah, but, death like, i don't know if it was murder or if he was just clumsy because it almost looks like he just kind of backs up and just kind of trips and falls isn't during that scene, isn't there like some points where Mark's got like sticks and he's beating people and like John's doing that too, where they're like, they're clearly murdering people. Mm-hmm. Like even before he falls and dies, they're really taking it too far. <laughs> like this is not uh, uh. like, uh, like a, like a, what's it called? Like a playground fight anymore. They're like literally either. Okay. So they're not, maybe they're not murdering everybody else, but they're maiming them. <laughs> the best part about this scene other than Jeff falling from the platform. Because they're like, I don't know what to do. He's like, what if I trip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah after, part- after showing like he's got all this martial arts skill, he, and he just trips. Falls backwards. <laughs> but the best part is, is that Mark and John are fighting people all over the place. His gang are, f- are fighting them. They're happening all around him. And 
Jeff never gets out of the chair. He's just sitting there. And every once in a while, he looks away. He goes, huh? What was that? <laughs> so he just sits there the entire time until he's surrounded. Then he finally takes off up the stairs. Because he doesn't know how to fight, right? I mean, when does Jeff actually fight anybody? Oh, wait. He falls to his death. <laughs> Yeah, that's when he puts out the sticks and like looks like he guy like, can actually <laughs> oh, yeah. do stuff. Yeah, no, he can't though, because then he dies. Because <laughs> then he trips and falls. He's actually just <laughs> clumsy. With that <laughs> wig, <laughs> threw him off. <laughs> Yoshido finds out that Jeff is dead at the hands of Dragon Sound, and now you'll see Yoshido is going to avenge his death. No one escapes which the is Miami a terrible. Ninja. <laughs> it, that's which is just a terrible business decision on his part. Your whole business is robbing drug dealers with, with ninjas. Uh, and you're going to send a bunch of ninjas. Like, you you don't avenge all the other ninjas that died. <laughs> <laughs> but Jeff why, was like why his do brother, you care though. So- <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like, why waste the ninjas? You need those guys to steal your drugs. <laughs> Plus, dragon sound are badass, and they they take the ninjas in the night. <laughs> what happens if you got a, if you run into a guy in Miami that's got amnesia and a badass speedboat that's taking everyone's cocaine and taking <laughs> over the whole Miami scene? Oh wait, where oh. are your ninjas? Where are your ninjas? <laughs> you, there's a great montage here too of the ninjas training and Yoshido fondly remembering his friend Jeff. <laughs> He's just like walking around. And, Picturing in his head scenes from earlier in the movie. Remember when we saw those Remember really gross time? titties? <laughs> and he wore that hat that said Colorado something. <laughs> that was, was so much clearly fun. He was your, clearly, the, him and Yoshido had some good times. <laughs> that one time. <laughs> Out at Casa de Orphan, Jeff gets a letter from his dad and a photo of his dad. He's like, he finally found him. And he lives nearby. I mean, no, yeah, he, has he was fly flying in. in. Yeah, to fly in, but close enough. Like he's gonna come same day. He's gonna be here today. <laughs> like, okay, like and, hold the phone, Dad. You haven't been around for however many years Jim is supposed to be. I think he's like thirty, but but and you haven't. Been, <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're like, oh my god, I found my son with no notice at all. I'm just gonna go show up at your house, son. <laughs> They want to take Jim and get him all fixed up, looking nice for his dad. So it's like total men's warehouse, you know. <laughs> also, it's kind of sad that between the all four of or five of them, whatever, they only have two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> so apparently, they're not that good of a band. No. <laughs> like it must not be that much of a paying gig, even though the club owner's writing their songs. <laughs> The best part, the best part of the scene is that after he gets this letter and he tells them that he found his dad, they hoist Jim up on their shoulders in the front lawn like, as if he just won the Super Bowl. That's what you do. <laughs> well, to a bunch of orphans, he did. <laughs> I mean, before this, they didn't even know he had a dad. <laughs> Things have taken a drastic turn for these people, okay? He's going to get to play catch. <laughs> He's going to learn about the birds and the bees. <laughs> well, I don't know because I don't think Jim's dad knows because he's younger. So I don't quite think he knows. Well, about Jim's going to teach bees. him. <laughs> There's also a great moment where after they get the suit, they head oh, over yeah. to like Jane's house. And John hasn't seen Jane since her brother was her murdered brother by died. him. Yes. And he comes up and he's like, oh, Jane, I've missed you. And, and he goes, I'm sorry I had to murder your brother. Like, literally. And, and she's like, I know, but yes. he deserved it. Yeah. She's like, yeah, yes. I know. I know it wasn't your fault. He's like, yeah, man, we had no other choice. We really just had to kill him. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I think, I mean, I know that maybe her brother was a jerk, but I think I might have a hard time if you killed my brother. Like, yeah. I don't think we continue yeah. a day it's after like, that. Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh, well, happy day. <laughs> so going I'm so happy picnic. for Jim. Yeah, she's like, but it's but you know what? Let's not dwell on my brother being murdered yesterday. It's Jim's day. Jim's dad's <laughs> coming. He's got a new suit. <laughs> all right, so this is all boiling down to Jim meeting his dad. No, ninjas, <laughs> ninjas everywhere. Jim's in his new suit and everything. Poor thing. He can't. He can't Poor fight Jim. anybody. Yeah, he's the one. Uh, he's the one member of the group that has not showed off any martial arts skill. Well, <laughs> he never gets a chance to either. <laughs> you know it's Florida when there's a motorcycle gang dressed as ninjas cruising down the road and no one bats an eye. No I'm one's like, like ah, we should follow them. See it's what a Thursday. <laughs> it's a Thursday. They do this every Thursday. <laughs> they corner Mark, John, and Jim. They're all three of them were heading to the airport. 
corner them, they jump off a bridge and run down in like a creek. Which danger, okay? It's Florida. Yeah, alligators. There's freaking gators down there. <laughs> the ninjas are yeah. the least of your worries. This is why I would never step foot in the state of Florida. I'm not, I oh, can't handle and, the gators. And Mark's making it worse. So after Jim takes a sword to the gut, Mark starts dragging him further into the swamp. This is how you get a brain amoeba. It's going into that water. Don't you oh know? Oh my God. Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> and they got a new one going around in Florida. So it's a true thing. <laughs> Now, Mark and John are pissed. They are pissed. And there's lots of slow-mo scenes where they're like, Wah! with the, with the sword. Because they just lay, they laid over Jim and just screamed, Jim! <laughs> and he's like, I know! <laughs> <laughs> so, what do they do to that poor guy? They drag him through the dirty-ass water with his big old wound, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. John goes ballistic. Murders a few ninjas and now has a taste for blood. <laughs> yeah, so much for There's friendship just... and loyalty and peace, huh? <laughs> yeah, running through the swamp like Braveheart with like blood <laughs> drenched in blood, like hunting down ninjas. <laughs> Which turns out a bunch of fat biker ninjas, not the best ninjas. <laughs> no, no, because Mark and John are able to mop up really easily. One of them, barely able to escape, gets up to Yoshido and says, "Everyone's dead." And Sorry. Yosh- Yoshida goes. <laughs> shakes his head, turns, chops off that ninja's head, and then goes <laughs> and then pause. And then we go back to Mark. <laughs> Comes down to it, final battle scene. It's not the end of the movie. No, it's no. the final battle scene. Yoshido versus Mark. Mark is pissed. He thinks his friend is going to die. He's out to get revenge. He's had enough battle ends with that's from when they're at ucf and you gave the example of how to stab someone when they try and they try to stab you and you reverse the knife on them you knew it was coming because they were very careful to show that scene earlier in the movie and he does it on yoshido and then yoshido dies and mark just walks off so so does john there's all these dead people all over this the side of the road <laughs> yeah. the and no and nobody gets arrested it's just like another tuesday bunch of dead ninjas in the swamp all the gators will take care of that <laughs> so and the next thing we do is we show up at the hospital because apparently jim didn't bleed to death while all that murdering ninjas was going on i know and, and this the swamp is modern gotten his cut and everything he's totally fine yeah and they're sitting in the waiting room with a young man with gray hair. <laughs> the best part about Looks to Jim be in his dead. 20s. The best part about Jim's dad is that he's artificially making his voice slower. He's like, I just yes. want to say thank you very much to everything that you've done to help my son. And I promise to be a better father. Yeah, to Mark. <laughs> Yeah. You're also a 45-year-old man. You know what it's like to try to raise a son. <laughs> oh, and the, the doctor is so terrible, too. Like, I don't even think he's a real doctor. No, he's definitely <laughs> not a real doctor. He's like, yeah, I think you'll be all right. Jim's going to be fine. I had 29 stitches, and he can go home today. Like, what? <laughs> he had his whole torso cut open. How can he go home? To- yes. He's totally fine. We gave him a tetanus shot, and we boosted him up. Good to go. So, also a reminder: like, there's all these other people that are in Dragon Sound. There's all these other characters that were in the movie, but we freeze frame at the end of the movie with Mark, Jim, and Jim's dad, <laughs> <laughs> who is not an old man. <laughs> and that's Miami Connection. I will never apologize for watching this movie. I will watch this movie a thousand more times in my lifetime. I mean, I think we watch it like six times now. <laughs> yes, yes, and not yeah. for fun. Not yeah, that we want, not we're... for the podcast for fun. <laughs> And it is this much fun every time I watch it. Yep. Mm-hmm. But before we get too far into our final thoughts, got to talk about the music because we talked about the music a bunch <laughs> in the context of the movie. But that's not the whole story on the music. We got to go talk about the music in Miami Connection, which is probably the best music in this whole season. Let's go break this one down. John, we've talked about the music and the lyrics in this music. We've seen them per- quote unquote perform it. <laughs> I know. There's got to be some wackiness and some craziness behind the music that's in this movie. What do you got? We're going to pepper in some guest stars with music as well. Because as you can imagine, none of these people were very successful after this. (laughs) (laughs) So, let's start out with YK Kim. YK Kim plays Mark. He's also the director, the writer. I'm pretty sure he owns at least one of the buildings it's filmed at. Including being the sensei to most of the other actors. 
Uh, at least the ninja ones. So YK Kim, aside from being a badass and being a black belt in Taekwondo since he was 13, he is also the publisher of Martial Arts World Magazine, which is a quarterly magazine. And he wrote a book called Winning is a Choice. He also owns a ton of Taekwondo stu martial arts studios throughout the Orlando, Florida area. I have to admit, his book as a... Um Personal growth, um, I can, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase it, like someone who takes personal growth and like development very seriously. I am very tempted on a consistent basis to buy YK Kim's book. And I don't know why I keep talking myself out of it. So if you're looking to buy the Go With The Heat podcast, a gift, I would love to get a copy of YK Kim's book. <laughs> Let's move it along. Let's also talk about Vincent Hirsch plays John. He has a 1974 acting credit in a kung fu movie called Gao Shu Shin Duan. Mm. So he actually had an acting credit before this, which I guess that stands for Dragons Never Die. So he actually was in a movie. I don't know what the role was or how big. Then he did Miami Connection, and then he didn't do anything else until 2005. He has an, a writer's credit for Itineraries, which looks like some kind of a depressing French film. <laughs> and then looking a little deeper, I found a Facebook of someone named Vincent Hirsch that looks that looked extremely like him. I'm not going <laughs> to say it was him, but looked a lot like him. Now, it hasn't been active since 2014, but at Aww. it lists him as working at the uh, Luna Sands Resort in Florida. So uh, I guess he never made it out of Florida. <laughs> that brings us to Marie Smith, the UFC. No, not the UFC legend, Marie Smith. But that, that apparently that is a popular misconception. Even the Wikipedia for Miami Connection, I think, makes that mistake. He is not actually the UFC fighter. <laughs> uh, according to IMBD trivia, Marie Smith never acted professionally again. He went on to a successful sales career working in business equipment and radio advertisement and merchandise sales, and nice. is a sales VP for a live-streamed online broadcast platform. By far, he made it the furthest. He's definitely <laughs> the... He did well for himself. Jim is okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us to Joseph Diamond, who plays Jack. He has this credit and a writer-director credit for a documentary in 2014 called The Iber Connection. And then that brings us to some of the actual music because most of the music, a lot, or at least a lot of it, was done by Angelo Gennati and Kathy Collier. Kathy Collier playing Jane and Angelo Gennati playing Tom. They stayed in the music business. Angelo Gennati worked on the 2013 Far Cry 3 soundtrack. Hmm. I, I'm not for sure that that's not one of their songs from this movie that mentions dragons that they used in it. So, and he also did a soundtrack called Ping Pong Summer in 2014. He also released a CD in 1999 called Greener Shades of Smooth, but did not have a label. I don't know how it did. <laughs> I'm not sure if it did too well. He's a guitar coach for uh, Elevate Studios. And I think you can actually zoom with him, and he will teach you how to play the guitar. Oh, so I didn't even think you about to, that. You can I want play to learn the, guitar. the guitar. Yeah, I think that's where. I, so I, I saw uh, it said uh, guitar coach, and it said you can contact him, Angelo oh, Gennati. That link is going in the show notes. Get him so more. then that brings us Kathy Collier. She was the one of the interview I read about the scripting and. Korean and about them telling Angelo to go get beers while she necked it with <laughs> Vincent. <laughs> so, and that's about all I know. I think she went on to have a wonderful family and kids, but she sounds like a <laughs> lovely lady based on the interview. I really didn't get much more. <laughs> I don't know. I'm guessing. I think she's fine, though. The two of them contributed the song Friends and Against Ninjas, which I think is the main one that they're singing throughout the beginning. The song Train Yard was provided by John McCollum. Uh, he also had a Phantasm II art department credit listed as a composer on Surf Nazis Must Die. Oh, oh yes. That's yeah. classic. And makeup department at Star Slammer. Someone got a promotion. <laughs> 
<laughs> William P. Young provided the lyrics for Escape from Miami and Taekwondo Family. I mentioned earlier in the podcast, they also plays the club owner, which is why he I got so fired up line. about them. Steal all your cocaine and <laughs> disappear into the night. <laughs> it explains why he was so fiery about them criticizing his songs. <laughs> Finally, Lloyd C. Sharp contributed on Escape from Miami, I Love You. Sorry, Lloyd C. Sharp and Rick Hartzog contributed on Escape from Miami, I Love You, Tough Guys, and Taekwondo Do Family. They have no other credits. Uh, not <laughs> d- Despite me looking heavily into like like scanning Facebooks, like, trust me, I found Vincent Hirsch's Facebook. I, could, <laughs> I couldn't find theirs. All those songs listed as being performed by the Lloyd's Richards Band. So I would assume Lloyd C. Sharp and Rick Rick Hartzog are the ones who actually performed all of William P. Young's songs. (laughs) Since they're they're pretty much the same song. Um, (laughs) Not only did William P. Young never write songs again and never showed up in another movie... Uh, the band that sang his songs never got any more gigs. They don't even have a Facebook. (laughs) So, pretty impressive now, if you look back and think that Angelo Giannotti is a guitar coach still. (laughs) He made it. I'm just saying. Oh, Maurice Smith is killing it too, man. VP of sales. Like, like, peace losers. (laughs) And that's your music slash guest stars. Listen, people, even if you've never watched this movie, please go to YouTube and look up Dragon Sound and listen to the music. All those people, they put in all this work to make this music. <laughs> Let's go give our final thoughts on this, the last movie of our best Karate City season. Let's go give our final thoughts. All right, Melissa, I'm going to save you for last because you got a bombshell to drop on everyone. So <laughs> okay. I'm going to save that one because you got firsthand experience with the details <laughs> that you're going to give to. So, you know, you know, you're the expert here. <laughs> I'm going to briefly say, because I think I'm the only one who's like just head over heels in love with this movie. And as I said at the beginning of the episode, I absolutely adore this movie. I love everything about it. I love its message. Karate trope. Karate movies are really good ones, like No Retreat, No Surrender. They're always about this, like, take care of your friends and do what it takes to do the right thing at any cost. The Miami Connection hits every single karate movie trope, all jammed into a single movie of 80 minutes of karate perfection that this hits out. And then on top of that, it's got so much heart. It just wants people to be happy, wants them to have friends, to be loyal, be honest. It just wants them to do the right thing. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, I have such a soft spot for this movie and I will never apologize for it because I just love everything about it. The story, the music, the lyrics to the songs, the stuff that doesn't make any sense, (laughs) all of it. I love it. The Florida people just in the background doing weird shit. Like, I love it. There's there's everything for me. Everything I could ever want out of a karate movie is all in this one. John, what are your final thoughts? I think you you touched it there. It is the, uh, for what we are, what the theme is and what we're doing. Like, it is the most Florida movie we could have chosen (laughs) for Florida martial arts. Like, like ninja bikers <laughs> <laughs> fighting a pop band that sings about friendship and dragons. Like, of course, of course, that's Florida. And I love it. It's a fun movie because it, it's like if me or you made a movie, you know, if we got all of our friends around together and we filmed the movie. <laughs> and we use like the props from our local drama department. How did they spend a million dollars on this? <laughs> <laughs> But yes, it is a fun movie and a perfect representation, in my opinion, of Florida martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> so the one, the one thing, they're kind of goobers. They're they're they're, they're goobers. They're goobers. Come on, guys. They're goobers. So I just I don't know how they're gonna match up against some of the other characters in the season. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it at that. Tipping his hat a little bit there about what he thinks. <laughs> Melissa, what are your final thoughts? Well, first, I want to say that I love this movie. I do. I love it. It's hilarious. It's great. It 
it it has it has such a wholesome feel until they start chopping people's heads off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is really like you, you're into it. Like, oh, it's about friendship and, and loyalty and about karate and taekwondo, <laughs> <laughs> taekwondo over and over again. And then there's like the whole parts where they're like talking about the history of taekwondo and and about why they do it and it's about peace and this. And then it really dawned on me, it's a freaking giant infomercial for his karate studios <laughs> he made a movie so he could promote his many karate studios and he filled the movie with people that are students from his karate studios <laughs> he just made a giant commercial i mean literally that's what it was oh think about God. it why is it just yeah. like it, why and they're like oh mark is such a badass mark look at mark and then there's like that whole part where he's just doing all the moves with his friends it's like okay yeah. so this was just him doing like a demonstration of how great he is at karate everyone i own all these karate ah. studios and people are going to see this movie and they're going to want to do taekwondo because it's about friendship and loyalty and peace oh my God. and everything and it worked I know. <laughs> so yes, his movie did not make money originally, like make movie money. Okay, I don't, I don't get the spending a million dollars thing, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but it didn't make a, it didn't make movie money. But I sure as hell bet the five people that saw it in theater <laughs> when it premiered <laughs> that three weeks, they wouldn't join that karate studio because it was badass. He cut people in half, and it was all about <laughs> friendship and loyalty. And to the, and for the record, he was, they were loyal to their friends. They did avenge his death. <laughs> we didn't die, but <laughs> he should have died. <laughs> but it was well, a giant that's, commercial. That's what it was. Yeah, no, no, and that that makes it not only one of the not only a great martial arts movie, but like probably the most kick-ass infomercial of all time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Think about it. Like I'm telling you, the whole part where he's like. And the, talking about the history of Taekwondo. Why would they put that in the movie? It's even in the lyrics to the music in that Taekwondo yes. family mm -hmm. song. So they talk, oh, it's right, in the Against the Ninja song. Talks about how they're going to stop the sense of killing. That Taekwondo is the only way. Yes. So they were like, if you live in Florida oh. and you can't defend yourself. No, <laughs> 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 Look at all these Florida people we put in this movie. They're scary. Look at They're scary. Go do Taekwondo. <laughs> it's Lord true. Richards, it's man. true. And it kind of sucks the wind out of the movie a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to burst your bubble but he just wants your well, money <laughs> i mean i'd like to see the scrub daddy guy do that <laughs> <laughs> the last note i'm gonna say before we end this podcast this is a note i want to say because it's the last movie in this season and we're gonna come back with one more episode where we're gonna break down our favorite movies from this season and pick out a karate city champion okay but we're gonna fight about that right and that's gonna be a lot of fun we mm -hmm. want you to come back and listen to that but in the moment i'm gonna say coincides with this movie is that there's a lot of podcasts out there and a lot of YouTube channels that are about bad movies. Yes, we have a lot of fun when we talk about these movies and we do make fun of the movies themselves. But for a movie like this and like with No Retreat, No Surrender and with The Room and with any other like classic Troll 2, any of the classic B movies, one of the things that I always loved about these movies and one of the things that we love as people who break these movies down is that these people who make them find a way. They have a vision. They find a way to be able to make mm -hmm. them. Yes, they are bad movies. But the grit and the, the, the determination and the will to bring their vision to life is what we love about it. And yes, they're not m movie people. So they make bad movies. And it's funny. And there's funny plots. And there's bad filming. And there's all this stuff. But I don't like the trend that people take these. They find bad movies on Netflix. And then they spend an hour just ripping it apart on like how did this thing get made and why would people waste their time with mm -hmm. this and they must be so embarrassed with miami connection as an example of this i am in constant amazement that this movie got made yk kim leveraged everything that he owned basically and look at what it turned into it's a great success lots of people love this movie mm -hmm. now they may love it for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. but lots of people love this movie and i wanted to use this as an example to say we're not here to rip other people's misfortunes to make ourselves look good. We broke this movie down mm. because we really, really, really want you to go watch this movie. We really want you to go watch Deadly Bet. We don't want you to watch Lone Wolf. We know. But we want you to watch No Retreat, No <laughs> Surrender. <laughs> Bloodsport, go watch it. We, Blood Fist, maybe not. But <laughs> We here are all about friendship and loyalty. That's yes. What we're saying. Exactly. This movie tells an amazing story about friendship and it's the only movie this season that was made without real dollar signs. He had dreams that had become 
popular and that people would really love it. And maybe it's an infomercial for Squatty Studios and people would come in. But it's the only one that wasn't made by some faceless Mm -hmm. movie studio that was just wanted to pump out action movies so they could make a few a few bucks. They pump them out like Roger Corman style. And that's what we love about Mm -hmm. B movies. That's what we love about trash movies is that these people that make them, they love them. They love the thing that they created, oh, and they're yeah. blind to it. And he saw nothing wrong with casting two random people sh- who knocked on his door asking to to write his theme song for the movie. <laughs> you know, like, well, maybe like I'm that. wrong. That's what makes it great. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he maybe he made the movie because he wanted to like promote like positivity, and mm-hmm. that that's what Taekwondo did, right? Uh-huh. And so like that's why. That's why they included like the parts where it was like talking about where Taekwondo came from and all that stuff like that. Like he was really trying to promote positivity through like what he loves, which is martial arts. So I could mm-hmm. be wrong. Could be not a commercial. Could just be why he wants to spread his positive vibes and then cut people's heads off. <laughs> but either way, there's, there's lots of YouTube and podcasts that are all about bad movies and they just rip apart. Much just to say that we're we're different from them. We love these movies. We love these people. We want them to be successful. That's why we're happy when we hear about them and being in other movies. Mm-hmm. We're happy for them. And we really want you to go watch these movies. Not like the other ones where they say, don't go watch this. We we went through the pain so you don't have to. Bullshit. Buy a copy of Miami Connection. Go watch it. You're going to have a great time. I promise. And that's going to do it for us this week on the Go With The Heat podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. I skipped all this last week. And <laughs> we you know what? Well, last time. Last week. Yeah, yeah. We haven't heard from anyone. So maybe it was a good thing so far. We'll see. <laughs> Some of these things have a long tail. So you know, lots of people love the Chuckster. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to come back around <laughs> on us at some <laughs> point in time. <laughs> go to that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways to subscribe. You can make sure you're subscribed to catch our final episode of this season. Because if you've been dipping in and out, picking and choosing what movies you like, which ones you don't still listen to the show, this next episode is the one to definitely come back for and listen to. Because after that episode, we're off for four months. That's the end of the season. We'll be off for four months through the holidays. Be back next year. If there's a next year, based on how 2020 is gone, we'll be back yeah. next year for our next season, our next theme. So we want you to come back for sure next week or next episode to listen to our breakdown of this whole season, what our favorite movies are you have to come back and we want to hear from you what were your favorite karate city mo- movies that happened this season who do you think should win maybe deadly best got a shot here i don't remember where blood fist took place <laughs> <laughs> well he's from he's from los Angeles. i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> thailand it took place in thailand brits has a chance <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the, whole country, the whole country of France because we don't know where he's from. Yes, Toronto, Roy. Toronto, Toronto, blood, uh, blood sport. Yep, absolutely. We want to hear from you. What is your city pick? Email us goldie at gmail dot com. Get us on Facebook. Get us on Twitter. Get us on Instagram. You can let us know where city you think is the best. We also want you to leave a review for the show. Now, no one ever reads the reviews, so don't put too much thought into that. Just give us five stars. But if you feel like you have to write us a review, we want you to go in there and we want you to recreate the scene in which YK Kim hires two people in his living room <laughs> who offered to make the music to be in their movie. We want you to recreate that entire scene in the in your description of your review. How do you think it went? <laughs> yeah. And at what point do you think he told him that, oh yeah, and your girlfriend's gonna make out with this dude? <laughs> That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pal. We have an orange or like a yellow and black I one. I told him about it. It's big. huge. Yeah, and it's got. And I sprayed it with a Roundup just to mess with it, and it's gotten bigger since then, so I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I told him. We created Spider-Man in the corner over there. It hasn't moved. What's it eating, I wonder? Giant, though. It's going to take over the garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's your place now. We're good. We're not going in there anymore.